In this video, I'm going to be introducing the Lebesgue outer measure. So, definition. Uh, the Lebesgue, um, given a subset of the real numbers, the Lebesgue measure of A is equal to the infimum, that's the greatest upper bound. So, if I had this a set on the real line, that right there is going to be the least upper bound because if I have uh, the greatest upper bound, because if I had anything greater, the greatest lower bound, because if I had anything greater, it won't be a lower bound. If I have anything less, it's not the, the greatest lower bound. Okay? The infimum of the sums, I'll write it here. Of the sums from i equals 1 to infinity of the lengths of intervals um, a i b i right the length of intervals which is going to be I guess b i minus a i okay such that the union from i equals 1 to infinity of these intervals a i b i contains a okay so if this is my set A, I could have the covering that looks like this. Right? So if I sum up the length of all those intervals, that's going to be less than, that's going to be greater than, that's going to be an overestimate of the Lebesgue measure. And what it does is it tones in on those overestimates until we get the correct amount. Okay, so, theorem. And it's going to be, uh, L is a, an outer measure, outer measure on R. And the proof, okay, so the first one, is that uh, the Lebesgue measure of the empty set, which um, is going to be zero. And this is trivial, because I could take rapidly decreasing open sets, just converging to a point, and that still cover the empty set, right? That still cover it. So the lengths can go arbitrarily small, and so we're done. Trivial. Okay, number two. Um, if A is a subset of B, uh, the set of the sums of the lengths of intervals, I'll denote it uh, I, I, right? Uh, such that their unions, their unions contain B, is actually going to be a subset of the set of the sums of the lengths of the intervals of the unions that contain A. Because guess what? Any interval that covers B automatically covers A, right? Because right there I can include contains A. Right there, that also contains A. Therefore, it's a subset. That's pretty obvious. And based on a theorem, I'll leave to you, theorem, um, if A is a subset of B, the infimum of A is greater than or equal to the infimum of B. Okay, that's a theorem I'll leave to you. And the intuition behind this is that if I have A and I have B, right, A, B, infimum of A, infimum of B, infimum of A is bigger. Okay, that's a pretty easy theorem. And so from that, we get that the infimum of that, which is the Lebesgue measure of B, is greater than or equal to the Lebesgue measure of A, which is what we wanted. Right, and number three, I'm going to use a lemma. I'm going to use a theorem, actually theorem 
um, A is equal to the infimum of A if and only if for all epsilon bigger than zero, there exists a B in element of A such that A is less than or equal to B less than A minus epsilon, or A plus epsilon, sorry. Okay, so that basically means if I have this, my set, okay, on the real numbers, and that right there, anything I pick right there, there exists a B right there, but it's still, uh, still greater than or equal to A. And that's also pretty easy to prove, and I'm also going to use a lemma, which is also easy to prove. A, if, for all epsilon bigger than zero, A is less than B plus epsilon, then... A is less than or equal to B. Okay? So, how am I going to use that? Well, using the first one, I know that the Lebesgue measure of A is going to be greater than or equal to. Okay? It's going to be greater than or equal to some sum, some sum, of the, oh, sorry. Let me first write out what we want. Um, the Lebesgue measure of the unions of EI is less than or equal to the sum from I equals 1 to infinity of the Lebesgue measures of EI. And so to prove this, I note that the Lebesgue measure of EK is going to be greater than or equal to the sum from K, uh, from i equals 1 to infinity of i, I'll denote it ki, k is there, i is there for the sum, plus epsilon over 2 to the k. Because epsilon over 2 to the k is some epsilon bigger than 0, and this theorem guarantees that this is going to be true right there. Oh, sorry, I have this backwards. Is that I need the epsilon... So we know that the sum from i equals 1 to infinity of i sub ki is less than or equal to, is less than, strictly less than, the Lebesgue measure of ek plus epsilon over 2 to the k. Okay? And so that the Lebesgue measure of the union of these EKs, I'll call it, is going to be less than or equal to the sum from I equals 1 to infinity of the sum, I'll do the sum from K equals 1 to infinity, of the sum from I equals 1 to infinity of these IKIs. Why is that? Well, because it's the infimum. It's a lower bound. And this is something that covers it, because each IK uh, set covers each EI, and we're doing the union, so we just continue adding them up. And by right here, right here, I know that this is less than the sum from K equals 1 to infinity of the Lebesgue measure of EK plus epsilon over 2K, 2 to the K which is equal to the sum from k equals 1 to infinity of the Lebesgue measure of ek. That sum evaluates to just epsilon. And so, for any epsilon bigger than 0 I choose, this is less than or equal to, uh, is less than that. And then by this lemma, the epsilon lemma, it's a strict less than. It's a strict less than or equal to without the epsilon. So, that's it. I'll write the little box. Okay, so we proved all three properties. And now, in the next video, I'll just give you a little hint at what we're going to do. So we're going to prove. Okay, so in the next video, next time, we're going to prove 
the open set AB is measurable, is L measurable, so that we at least have the minimum, the minimal sigma algebra generated by these sets, uh, which is the Borel sigma algebra, actually. So we're going to at least have the Borel sigma algebra in the L measurable sets. And we'll also have the closed intervals is L measurable. Okay? So they're both L measurable. And that gives us a lot of sets for the L measurable sets. And so this is a very useful measure. And we'll also prove that the Lebesgue measure of an interval AB is equal to the Lebesgue measure of the closed interval AB is equal to B minus A. Okay, that's all in next videos, section 2.1, section 2.